dolls it's your girl jazzy j welcome or welcome back to my channel and if this is your first time here welcome all right guys so as you can see by the title i want to have a little girl talk with you guys usually i have my wine with me but your girl ain't get a chance to go get no wine so it's not going to be happy hour it's just going to be a little girl talk first i want to share a little story with you guys that happened um i think about two weeks to today almost yeah two weeks so tomorrow which you guys not gonna know the date because this will be released a little later but I'm gonna pop some stories here on the screen this happened about two weeks ago so I was at the gym working out and and I don't know if this is the same man that I'm that's in the story but I'm just going to tell you some things in the gym that kind of happened, that kind of triggered that it was something going on. So I was in the gym working out and a man walked in in his military uniform with a child on his hip, which is very unusual because my gym doesn't have a daycare. Um, I've never seen any kids in there since I signed up. And it looked like he was in a hurry, walking around, looking everywhere, you know, maybe looking for the mom. That's what it kind of seemed like as he was walking through the gym. Again, like I said, I don't know if this has anything to do with this story, but this is just something that kind of triggered something in me that something weird was happening. You know, you can kind you guys ever have that feeling like, dang, this is odd, like feeling like maybe you got a gut feeling about something. Well, seeing him walk through the gym with that kid gave me like a really weird gut feeling. So I was going to do like another workout and then go home. But because of that gut feeling that I got, I decided to just wrap my workout, wrap up my workout and go home. Guys, I got home, took a quick shower. By the time I got out of the shower, I was getting a phone call from a friend of mine asking was I in the gym because usually I'm in the gym that time and I was like no I got home about 10 minutes ago and they were like a active shooting is happening right now at the gym and I was like are you serious I was just I literally just was in a gym like right now and they were like right now you know people are being held hostage it's like active happening and I literally immediately got sick to my stomach I got sick to my stomach and I told my kids, come here. I just wanted to hug them. It literally scared me to death. I didn't know all the details just yet. I just got that phone call. So all I knew was an active shooting, but I got sick. I felt crazy. Like, wow, I was just at the gym. Like what? I didn't notice anything weird. But then again, I did notice something weird, but I don't, like I said, I don't know if it's the same man, So, I, but Seeing him gave me a gut feeling that something, it was weird. It was just odd. I could not, for like the next 10, 15 minutes, wrap my head around what was going on at the gym. So, after, you know, I, I kind of gathered myself and I went to Facebook and to see if this was, you know, Facebook is literally the news. So everybody that was like in the gym, at the cleaners, in that plaza was filming live. They were held inside. Everybody was on lockdown. You could see the police out there with their guns. You could see it was a standoff and people are filming it live. I could not believe that I literally had just left that parking lot. So apparently a husband and a wife um, this is stories that is being put out that I guess the wife was done with the marriage because, you know, there's um, reports that someone said that she had messaged him and said that she was over. But who, who knows? These are just stories that we're hearing, not what was published. So and then he came to the gym looking for her. from the people that was there people that was releasing the live footage said that she was running for her life in that parking lot and he was in his truck and when the cameras from the news got there you could see his truck literally on the curb doors open 
She ran into a business right next to the gym. He shot and killed her, held the people in that business hostage until he decided to end his own life. And as you guys can see by the stories that I'm posting on the screen here, you can see, you know, details of the story. So that brought me to today's girls talk because me and, you know, my friends and family were talking about it. Like what could have drove this man to literally hunt his wife down like an animal because she was running for her life as he was shooting at her, hunt her down like an animal and to kill her in broad daylight. It was, it, it couldn't have been no more than like 10, 30, 11 a.m. What could have triggered you that much to take someone down in the middle of the daytime, hunt her down and kill her and not only kill yourself? Now, this type of thing does happen more than we would like to say, and it is really sad. So I wanted to do a little girl talk today. I dug up some things because I, I just, because I was, you know, almost in that scene so it really touched me i was really sad about it you know so i wanted to go online dig it up and figure out some things that might have like can i put myself in his shoes or you know have any of you any of us ever been in a toxic relationship where we felt fear so i searched and found out traits of toxic relationships toxic people and I was surprised myself that I checked off a lot of the things in previous relationships that I've been involved in, you know, not knowing at that time that I was in a toxic relationship. So I literally don't want any man to love me to the point of death. I do not want that. So we're gonna talk about, you know, and he was a soldier um, I think they say he was 15 years in the service. So I don't know if there was a mental break, you know, um, cause you know, the soldiers, they, a lot of times they don't get the necessary help they need once they get out, but he was still very active. So we don't know if it was something mental, anger, you know, crime of passion. Um, uh, that's what they call that when that's done like that, a crime of passion, but what triggers it? So before we get into what triggers it, I have my notebook. Y'all haven't had to do this in a long time where I had all my notes. It's been a while since we sat down and do a little talk. So the traits of a toxic person that you may have dated. Literally, I told you, I checked out some of these boxes myself. So traits of someone that is toxic. The lack of support. They don't support you in anything you got going on. It's like they're secretly hating on you for no reason. Um, toxic communication. They talk to you crazy. Aggressive. Without love. Without compassion. Envy or jealousy. They're jealous of you. Why? We're together. Why would you be jealous of anything that I got going on or what I look like or anything? We're together. Controlling behaviors. They want to control everything you do, say, where. When I'm, y'all, I, I have, I, I know some people who allow their men to control their outfits, control their hair, their makeup. Make that make sense to me. I am my own individual. I was born by myself. I will die by myself. I have a mother and father. What gives you? You didn't bring me into this world. What gives you permission to control me? Um, resentment, holding on to grudges, being dishonest. And you know, a lot of people are dishonest in relationships and you don't, you just think that they're just liars. You don't know that this is a toxic trait for someone that they lie about literally any and everything, the smallest thing they lie about. Um, patterns of disrespect, y'all, I'm telling you, I literally been involved in all of, pretty much all of this so far. 
But yeah, being disrespected as your queen is a sign of a toxic individual because that means that they don't have no respect for you. And the love that they say they have for you, it can't be. Not if you're disrespecting me. Negative financial behaviors. Hmm. Now, I have dated a few people who had um, this, this stupid shit with their money. And then uh, expect you to put your name and, you know, your financial behind them. You know, because they have no respect for your own financial, you know, situation. Um, they're constantly stressed. I know everybody goes through stress. But they're saying that if someone is constantly stressed all the time and they're putting their heavy on everyone else, on their relationship, on their friends, that is a toxic individual. Ignoring your needs. If you're putting your needs right in front of them and they're still ignoring it like they don't care, that is a toxic individual. Making you feel like you have to walk on eggshells. And y'all can see this is so emotional to me because that story really triggered like I've never experienced that but the fact that this woman I just I just keep thinking about like her fear you know running for her life you know I don't know if she was a mom she was 35 he was 36 but every time I'm out and about I think about my children I try to make sure I'm in a safe environment because I need to come home but the fact that the man that you love is chasing you down literally with black eyes you see to his soul that he's going to kill you i keep imagining you know what could have gone through her mind in those matter of seconds that she was running for her life y'all it is so heavy and and this happens all the time but because i was literally almost there and this is happening in my neighborhood it, it really does bother me a lot but back to the traits they all they are a all take but no give type of person. You know, they'll take, 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 but don't want to give. When you find yourself unhappy, afraid, arguing over the smallest things, always rubbing each other the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? They hold the relationship hostage, knowing in their mind they are done with this relationship before whatever reason. Y'all ever heard that saying, and I know everyone has. If I can't have you, nobody will. So that is something in here that is chemically unbalanced. If you feel like you control or you have ownership of that person, that you have the right to take their life. Because one, maybe they don't want to be with you no more. The relationship is toxic. You know what I'm saying? It's just ridiculous how people feel so much ownership over other people. Let people go. If they don't want to be with you, then there's so many fishes in the sea, honey. There really are. And there's a lot of single people out here. So let them go. If it was meant to be, guess what? It'll do a 360 and come right back. So what I found out about toxic people, they say... It really isn't a mental illness, but it can come from past trauma, from childhood, you know. Um, I That's what Google said. Google said it's not a mental thing. But honestly, I do believe it's a mental thing. I think that something up top just is, is not clicking on every belt. It's something up there just is not right. Um... They say it could be trauma that they don't know how to process. So they act out. So that's all the notes that I pulled from Google about traits of a toxic individual. And I just want to have a, a really quick talk, guys, because that was just so serious to me. I've been in, you know, crazy relationships where I thought it was cute that a guy was stalking me, you know. Okay, y'all. I'm going to tell this one little story, and it, it's not funny. I thought it was funny when I was younger. I thought it was cute. I thought it was sexy. But now that I'm older, it definitely wasn't none of those things. So, um, I got it. I was dating, and he worked the third shift. So, um, 
he was at my house getting ready for work and my friends were there as well and his rule his rule controlling when i leave the house everyone has to leave the house and at this time i only had one child she was probably i want to say two about two so it was me her him so my friends you know they were like oh okay so we gotta go and i followed those i did what he said because i loved them and i didn't want no static i you guys got to go my man said you got to go so my friends were like, dang, that's really messed up. We were just, we were playing cars or something. Like, we were just, like, getting into, I get it, but you got to go. And for whatever reason, in his mind that night, and I don't know how many times this may have happened because I only found about, found out about what's going to happen. I'm going to get to it from this night. So, everybody leaves. He says goodbye. He's going to work. He leaves. So me and my daughter, we're just watching TV. My One of my friends, which is a guy, he calls me. I don't know why I'm doing all this because it was a guy, which actually is my best friend. He's a guy, which is my best friend. If you guys been here, you've seen him on my channel at least once or twice. But my best friend, he called me back and he said, hey, Jay, I actually left my hat sitting right up on the couch. And I was like, oh, I see it. And he said, um, me and whoever he was with is going to circle back. I'm going to run up and get it. I'm like, no problem, y'all. I didn't see no harm in this. This is my best friend. He left his hat. So I'm just coming to get, you know, he's coming just to get his hat. That's all I, That's all I'm thinking. So he calls me on the phone. And I was like, oh, you're here? He said, I'm here, but. He said, I'm pulling back into your parking lot at your apartments. And I see your boyfriend car is still here. I was like, what? I said, he been left like. 30, 40 minutes ago. I'm like, he should be at work right now. He said, no, I'm pretty sure this is his car. And I'm pretty sure he's sitting in there in the dark. And I'm like, that is, that's crazy. Like, he is, he's going to work. He said, I promise you. I said, okay. So, and actually, actually, one of my other homegirls were still there. She was still there because she was staying the night. Y'all, I was y'all. Still had, you know, friends spend the night. So she actually was spending night. She was the only one that did not leave because she was staying with me for like a week. She lived out of town, so she was staying with me for the week. So I was like, bet, y'all just wait a minute. I'm going to go out back, come around, and see if this is really him. So I told my homegirl, yo, I'm young now. Don't judge me. So I told my homegirl, yo, let's go down the back, go down the stairs. So we're going to go around and see if it's him. I'm like, grab my baby. Let's go got my baby we we're creeping in the dark coming around the apartments from the back and i'm peeping around the apartment building and it's him sitting in the car <clears throat> yeah low like this looking up at my window because i was up top he was doing that i'm like what I'm telling my homegirl, like, what is he doing? Like, he don't, what is this? He don't trust me? Like, I'm not understanding this. Like, this is w giving weird energy here. So we creep back up. So I tell my homeboy, yeah, come on up, grab your hat. And, you know, thank you for letting me know. He said, you sure? I said, yes, you're coming to get your hat. It's not like you're staying. Come get your hat. So he gets his hat. And he's like, all right, you sure you're going to be okay? I'm good. I'm, I don't. I didn't think I was doing anything wrong, so I'm like, I'm good. So he leaves and he calls me like, "Yo, that was him. That was him." He's like, "What is he?" I said, Man, "I have no idea." I said, "But I'm gonna." And I thought, "Y'all, I don't know. I was gonna be Inspector Gadget." So I tell my homegirl, "Yo, we gonna run up the street, go to the gas station, get some snacks or whatever, we're gonna watch movies." So we get in the car and I get in. We're out there fake laughing. <laughs> yeah, girl. Just. I'm peeping him, but I don't want him to know that I see him. So I'm pretending that we're just having the best of conversations. I lock my baby in her car seat. We leave. We're gone 10, 15 minutes right up the street. We come back and I pull in and look and I'm like, he's not in the car. She's like, what? I said, he's not in the car. She was like, okay, this is getting crazy. I'm like, man, I don't know. I, I'm getting scared now because I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I'm like, 
Did he get sick or did they tell him he didn't have to go to work? But I saw you in there, gangster leaning, looking up <laughs> at my apartment. So you're not sick. So I go in. Nobody's in the living room. So I tell my friend, I say, just, you know, sit right here. Keep my daughter. So I go into my bedroom in the dark. He's sitting there like a crazy person. Like literally just staring off into just like. And I'm like, you didn't have to go to work pretending I didn't know he was sitting out there watching me for like hours. I'm like, you didn't have to go to work. What are you doing back here? He says nothing. I'm like, hello, are you sick? Did they tell you you didn't have to go in? Like, what's up? This man, y'all, did not even look at me. He was looking mm, somewhere else. He, he doesn't even turn to me. And he says, you must think I'm fucking crazy. Sir, what are you talking about? I'm asking, are you sick? Are you okay? What are you talking about? You must think I'm crazy. I'm like, I don't know what you're referring to. But if you want to talk, let's talk. Let's cut these lights on. Because this is, this is scaring me. Like, let's talk about it. So, he still doesn't. It's like, I don't know, it was so weird. It was weird. He just was like, I sat out there because something in my gut told me you were trying to play me. Play you how? How? I'm here with my homegirl and my daughter. Play you how? I knew you was going to call them. Uh, I, I can't, I'm not going to say it on YouTube. But those, your friends, back over when I left. First of all, this is my place. Even if I wanted to, it's still my place. And I was like, I didn't call anyone back over. You know, what are you talking about? I said, my best friend came back because he left his hat. And as you can see, he's not here. He was like, my gut told me you were up to no good. And then gets extremely angry, stands up, puffs up. Now I'm really afraid. And I'm like, sir, I'm not, I'm not going to do this. I didn't sign up for this type of relationship. I didn't even know... <laughs> You had this in you. Like, what's what's wrong here? And we end up just talking about it through the night. But it was weird. He was just, like, in tears. Like, I knew you were trying to hurt me. It took me all night till the sun came up to convince this man I wasn't trying to hurt him. And I wasn't trying to call anybody back to do. I don't know what he thought I was going to do when my child was there. And, y'all, this wasn't the first. I'm going to give y'all one more little quick story time. I'm going to wrap this up. One day, he, like I said, he worked a third shift. So I was coming to work. I worked in the morning. And I usually get to work, usually got to work like 8 o'clock. And it was a call center. So I'm walking into the call center. I hear horn, boop, boop. And I see him. And I'm like, this, this is odd. Like, why are you here? And he's in the car like he's depressed. I was like, oh, well, hey, babe. I'm surprised to see you. Like, what you doing? And he looks like, he's just like, I just wanted to see you. But like depressed. And I'm like, okay, well, that's cool. I thought you, you know, you would be tired. Go home. No, I'm just checking the scene. Checking the scene. I am at work. I am at work. But his, he didn't even look, again, he didn't even look at me. It was like, he was so depressed. And I'm like, okay, but there's no scene to check. And for the longest, I'm in that car like, I need to go to work. But I felt like I had to cater. I had to lift him up, you know, lift his spirits because I, I could see something was bothering him. And I don't know why this man just, just thought I it was trying to literally hurt him. I don't Maybe it was something, again, from his past trauma that he didn't know how to process. But he didn't come off as controlling he didn't scare me. We didn't argue that much. Barely ever. The only time we ever had like odds were that one time. He was he was great. But those two weird moments, I kind of was like, this is the second time he's done kind of like acted out kind of weird on me. Like, so reading, you know, some of those traits, and I'm like checking off some of the boxes. I literally was in a toxic relationship. I had no idea that that's what that was. I, like I said, I thought it was cute. I thought it was sexy. Like, oh my God, he's crazy about me. 
Like, he's just showing up at my job, stalking my house. That's so cute. It's not cute. It's not cute. <laughs> you know, I didn't know that then. That is, it, it wasn't cute. Now that I think about it, it's kind of scary. Like, you're literally, you know, stalked my house for hours. You sat at my job, you know, and then you had this weird, like, I don't know. It was weird. Like, he wasn't there. Like, and I had saw it enough, like three times. I'm not going to throw all the stories, but I saw it enough to say, mm -hmm. this is too weird for me. I'm not used to weird. I'm not, it was cute for a minute, but it's not, I can't. And we broke up because, and I thought he was just the greatest man, you know, financially responsible, had a great job, loved me, you know, took on my kid as if it, she was his, you know. I just couldn't deal with it crazy. So I literally was in a toxic relationship. But thank God, you know, in, in the relationships that I was in, I was able to just walk away. Unfortunately for this woman, she wasn't. She died trying to get away from that. Even if she cheated on him, even if she said, I don't wanna be with you, it, it does not give you the right to kill because your heart was broken or because somebody does not want you any longer. It does not give you a right. And guys, okay, so really, 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 really quick. I know I said those are my last two stories, but as I'm sitting here, more and more crazy stuff, relationships I have been through that was toxic. So really, really quick, another quick story time. It's going to be two quick stories. This is a different boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So same friends. We hung out all the time. We were in college. We always hung out after school all night. My boyfriend, he went to college at a, you know, different state. One night, we're all in there making chicken. This is what we did every night. We hung out at my apartment, cooked chicken. College stuff that we're supposed to do. And one of my friends, my best friend and his friend was like, hey, nobody react, but there is a face in the window. Now, this is a different apartment. So this one was on, it was a townhouse. So we were in the kitchen. And I'm like, a face. He was like, nobody looks crazy. Like, just look slowly. So I look. Why is my boyfriend at the window staring, been watching for the longest? And I'm like, are you, what are you doing? Are you crazy? Like, why are you staring in my window? Why, this is, why, you're, you're supposed to be in a whole other state, but you're at my window. Like, what's going on here? So I let him in. And then he's so weird, so angry. What you got going on in here? You know everyone that's in here. Like, what is going on here? Why are you being weird looking through my window? I had so many incidents with this guy. I'm not going to say all of them. But that was just one weird incident. My friends were so weirded out. It's like, hey, yo, we catch that chicken another day. Uh, we out. Cool. So this, this boyfriend, y'all, let me tell you, I used to party so much. And like I said, he, he was in another state, but he controlled me from another state. So usually I would go out and he was like, you're not going out tonight. I mean, that's fine. I can stay home. That's cool. I'll... He was like, and I'm going to make sure you don't. This is when landlines was a thing. He, I'm calling your apartment every hour on the hour to make sure you don't go out. And y'all, this man called me every hour on the hour to make sure i did not go out till the sun came up that's crazy that is controlling behavior yo that's controlling behavior one more i swear this is it same guy i swear this is it my home burned down june 6th of 2006 my whole entire family was in there and we all made it out safely but we did lose our home you know but my that boyfriend, which was at college, this is right before I moved because I lost my home. I had to, you know, go out and get my own because my home burned down. But before I got my apartment, living back at home, y'all. So I wake up at like, I think it happened like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. in the morning. And I wake up to my house on, in flames. My family is screaming in the background. You know, I'm being told 
get out, get out, get out. You know, grab what you can. So I grab my baby, I grab my phone, I grab my keys. As I'm running through this burning house, I can't see nothing. I just hear my family, you know, running and screaming, scuffling around. So I get to my car, boom. I get my baby out of harm's way. I go back, help my family. We get what we can, make sure everybody is out. My phone is ringing off the hook. I'm not answering it. My family's home is burning to the ground. The only pictures I have of my mom, family members, is burning to the ground. Literally, I'm not caring about my phone. It's ringing, 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 ringing. So after all that is over, all the tears, all the where are we going to go, what's happening next. So my whole family, we pile up. And we go stay at my sister, my other sister. That phone, ring, 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 ring. So finally I answer it like, my God, who, hello, it's him. And he's, why you didn't answer that phone? I should never have to call you and you don't answer. And I'm crying. I'm like, my whole house, my home just burnt to the ground. I don't care about answering the phone. This man still did not, it's like it didn't, that part didn't register. I just said my house burned to the ground. I barely made it out. I have on my nightgown. That's all I own now. He was still concerned. I called you like 10 times. You didn't answer. Um, sir, last time I checked, when there's a fire, you get out. You don't worry about who's calling your cell phone. You know, I just managed to get grab my cell phone, you know, because you know, cell phones, you know, they're important sometimes. But I grab my phone, you know. I grab my baby. I grab myself. But I don't care that this phone is ringing i don't care at this moment my whole childhood every memory that i had of my mother is burning to the ground and you you're still it's like it did not register that i just lost everything all he cared about is why I didn't answer that phone and he was like well what when did this happen like an hour ago i called you 10 times before that are you serious Maybe I was asleep. So, just to hear those traits, I've literally probably, I hate to say this, every, every relationship I've been in has been toxic. It isn't me, you know? But the people that I dated, they check off that list. And that's very scary to think about, that I was in so many toxic, controlling, scary relationships and thought it was cute i don't know but y'all let me know down in the um, comments if you ever dated someone toxic you know or you've been i don't know how open you want to be with me but i would love for you to be very open with me down in the comments you know if you've ever been in a relationship where you felt like the person you were with scared you or didn't support you or disrespected you you know Let's get real and let's talk about it because we have to now stop thinking that those things are cute and take care of ourselves. And if we feel that we're with someone that's toxic, get out quickly and safely as you can. All right, guys. So I know this video has been some smiles, and but it's really serious and it did touch me, you know, a lot. Like, I still think about it to this day like I was just there, you know. I could have walked past her in the gym. She could have sat next to me on the bike. You know, we could have locked eyes for a couple of seconds. It bothers me. You know, so I wanted to share, you know, that story. And, you know, just open up the line of communication with you guys. All right, so I hope you have, you know, I can't really say enjoy this video, but I hope that you guys, you know, really will, you know, talk with me in the comments let's talk about it because it is a real thing and then it's just not male to female there are some toxic females too there is there's some scary chicks out there all right guys so that's gonna be it for you girl um if you guys are new here i would love for you to subscribe to my channel on my road to 2k um yeah and comment and like so i will see you guys on my next upload thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate you always those who always come back and support my channel thank you so much all right guys i'll see y'all next time bye you